Hi, everybody. Uh, Eitan uh, uh, here um, presenting uh, um, for Banana Bites, a new episode. Uh, we're going to show this uh, uh, awesome case, uh, which is also uh, available in, uh, in the website. You go on nurenjo.org, case library, and then uh, you select the stroke section. You're going to find this case as well as multiple other cases. So uh, this case is uh, awesome because it has uh, quite a few uh, teaching points. Um, it's a patient presenting with a left MCA syndrome and uh, CT perfusion is done, which uh, is this one. And you know, CT perfusion may show uh, um, something very uh, like very important sometimes in the setting to, the, to, uh, to understand the recognized penumbra versus, uh, versus uh, core. And in this case, it shows like this very obvious uh, uh, left uh, MCA in peer division, uh, M2 uh, uh, territory of oligemia with uh, as, uh, an area of core. But more importantly, uh, they use, uh, the usefulness of this uh, perfusion is because it shows something more than that. And uh, if, you, if you focus on the on the uh, on the maps here, you can see that there is a little more than just the inferior division M2. There is a involvement of the bilateral parietal lobes. Now, is this an artifact? Does this make sense? You can look at the perfusion map separately, and in particular, in particular, uh, uh, you look at the uh, the T max and here, and you will recognize it on the T max as well as on the on the on the um, on the uh, uh, on the mean transit time image, there is indeed like delay of the bilateral parietal lobes. Now, how is how does that make sense? And uh, in order to understand this actually it comes to very handy, the fact that the, this same patient had a stroke uh, a few months before. And uh, uh, indeed, like three months before, he had like a, a, a stroke on the right side. He has a right MC occlusion, like a, a, an inferior division M2 occlusion on the right side. And these are the images part of that uh, thrombectomy that was done. And uh, those images demonstrate that, uh, you know, something that uh, is very un a little unusual, which is that the right, the right ACA, like uh, uh, extends here is a pericalosal artery, but it supplies only the frontal lobes, the mesial parietal lobes that you most commonly, the most common anatomical pattern is usually supplied the pericalosal artery here is not is not visualized when the right ICA is injected. So um, so who supplies the right MCA territory, sorry, the right uh, uh, parietal ACA territory? The answer comes from the injection of the left side that again was done uh, three months before in that uh, in that particular setting. This is a left ICA injection. And what we appreciate is that uh, the left anterior cerebral artery through a large pericalosal artery supplies the bilateral parietal lobes. And, uh, and this is a, what is called like a bihemispheric pericalosal artery, which is not a very uncommon thing to see. Um, interestingly, in this particular patient, as we know, there is an MCA uh, inferior division occlusion. So it's the left anterior cerebral artery that collateralizes to, the, to this territory through the uh, parietal branches. Um, now, um, the, um, the, uh, the reason why this is usually very often hard to identify is because you may have some feeling of the, of the right anterior cerebral artery as well through, a, through, a, through an ACOM, and that, that may not give a very clean uh, visualization of what is supplied by which side the anterior cerebral artery. Um, now, having said that, having understood now the anatomy based on the prior uh, and geography. Now, when we go back to the current study, we understand exactly what's going on. Indeed, like what we have here is, and we understand based on the perfusion, we have two separate occlusion. We have an occlusion of a inferior division M2, and we have an occlusion of the uh, distal sort of uh, 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 azidus by hemispheric pericalosal artery. And these two occlusion can explain, explain completely this perfusion pattern. Here it is on the angiography, the, the occlusion of the, of the M2 inferior division and the occlusion of the distal pericalosal artery, which limits the supply to the bilateral parietal, mesial parietal lobes. 
So what to do here, like we bring, uh, uh, we like to do aspiration distally also with, uh, uh, in this case with uh, Sophia 5, and uh, we, we, we aspirated the clot completely from the inferior division. And uh, it happens that uh, he, in the, while we, we opened this, he also had a, a, a spontaneous recanalization of the pericolosal artery. So this is the final showing the, um, the final like complete uh, recanalization. Um, uh, and uh, and uh, this is, these are the CT post uh, post thrombectomy showing a very good uh, uh, very good result. Um, teaching point for this case: use of the perfusion uh, imaging not only as a merely as a tool to 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 understand what's the core of the penumbra, but really to understand what we're facing. You know, in, in such a case, it really gives us in a glance, in one image, in, gives us the understanding that there is a multi-vessel problem here. And so we're going to be ready for that. Um, it's uh, uh, sometimes it can be con in, in the other side. So in, 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 obviously in this case, like you do a left ICA, even if you don't know before, if you look at the images carefully, you would understand what you're dealing with. But there are situations in which like the other occlusion is on the other side. And like that's where like these are situations where perfusion imaging becomes very important as a diagnostic tool, understanding what we're facing. And, um, and also how the variants really like can explain much of, uh, of, 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 of the things that we're dealing with. And, uh, you know, recognizing, expecting variants and recognize them uh, is going to make us uh, um, understand more what we're dealing with. Um, it, again, you can go to case library uh, uh, here and uh, and uh, like uh, uh, find all other um, all other cases that are listed. They're listed in in uh, in uh, topics like diagnostic angiography, venous, spine, uh, um, aneurysm, and then if you go to the stroke section, uh, you're gonna find all sort of cases, including the one that we're currently talking about. Thank you very much uh, for your attention. See you soon for another episode of Banana Bites.